Hi. Can everyone see me? Um, Hi, Nina. How are you? Oh, okay. Um, yay. So let me do, oh, I hear us the echo, so let me know if you also hear it on your end. Um, I am really excited to invite everyone to Sister Time by another virtual event with MK Jemison. Um, I, so, and you should have seen the invitation to join shortly. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm so excited to be here. Um, good. All right. Are we in the green room? Or are we live now or what? We're live. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm good. How are you? I love your hair. Oh, thank you. That is cute. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm always I looking for like, ideas. I, no, I always look for people thing because it's like rollers, but to make it look like hair. So I'm like, the fact that you have to, it changes my whole life. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm happy to help. Um, I'm having a little difficulty hearing you. You're cutting out and it's like sort of echoey. Okay. Let me try to. I don't know how I sound. You sound great. Oh, okay. Okay, so it's my audio is on my it's left. This is why I, I end up always using a headset with, a, I don't know if you have one on or not. Um, Crowdcast and audio issues seem to go together. Mm. I'm switching to headphones now. Okay. Hi, folks. I see people in the chat are very excited. People are very excited. <laughs> Hi, Andre. Okay. Oh, I usually do this on Zoom, so I'm like, how do I blur my background? You can't. It's Crowdcast. Um, that's okay, Is though. That, <laughs> is that better? Uh, you have to say a little more. Is that better? Can you hear me better? Is it that's a little better. Echo? Yeah, that's that's okay. a little better. I'm not hearing the cutting out or the echoing. Yeah. Awesome. 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 Because you never know, like, are headphones better or headphones not better? Okay, so we will do this. Um, so, yeah, so everyone, welcome. This is um, a Sister Sci Fi private virtual event with Anka Jemison. I am Isaac Asari, CEO and founder of Sister Sci Fi, the first black owned bookstore focused on science fiction and fantasy in the US. And I didn't just make that up, I also asked the ABA and they said, as far as I know, that tracks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, Anka Jemison. I like calling you N.K. Jemison, so I'll keep calling you that. Um, uh, you can. Know, it's also <laughs> Nora is fine. Um, so it's up to you. <laughs> right now, for a little bit, I'll keep calling you N.K. Jemison. Needs an introduction, but I love reading fast facts. I pulled this from your website. So N.K. Jemison is a New York Times bestselling author of speculative fiction, short stories, and novels, who lives in Brooklyn, New York. Yeah! What a big day! <laughs> <laughs> the first author to win three um, best novel who goes in a row. So not first black woman, not first woman, not first black person, first author, period. Um, she also won a Nebula Award, two Locus Awards, and is a recipient of the MacArthur quote unquote genius fellowship, much like Octavia e. Butler. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little shocking, but yeah, I always, I always am surprised by that part. But uh, I'll, I'll get used to it eventually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, to me, it's, it says one, but to me, it is definitely well um, earned. I'm sure as you know. So now I'm hearing a kind of ticking sound. Like a da -da 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 I hear. I hear Here's doing a thing right now um, like a mechanical thing or i wonder if that's maybe it's on my end i'm not quite sure oh it's gone whatever it is as soon as i put myself on mute it stopped do you hear it now no it's gone now oh okay that was weird wait it's still oh, yeah, there so. it's just quieter yeah it's still there but it's just quiet so when I'm not talking, I'll put myself on me. Maybe I need to check my sound bar. It, it's mic. soft enough now that it's not a big deal. So, okay. But yeah, I can see. Let me know if there's um, anything with, weird with the sound. 
if everybody's around this and the tech goddesses are okay with it, I'm going <laughs> to share a sample of the audiobook just because the combination of your words and Robin Ma's voice just always gives me chills. I, uh, me um, too. Mm -hmm. So okay. hopefully the tech goddesses are with me. And if not, um, um, I posted the sample on Instagram so you can check it out on Instagram. Hmm. Uh, uh, actually, okay. let, me, let me make sure I share this sound too. Okay. Now, now can, can everybody, everybody echo? A lot of echo. Yeah, yeah. Oh yes. Oh yes. Welcome. To New York. To New York. How she and Bobby House presents The World We Miss. The World We Miss. Written by N.K. Jemison. Written by N.K. Jemison. Robin Miles. Robin Miles. She makes it to the subway at least. She makes it to the subway at least. She makes it to the subway. So that was the sample of the audiobook. <laughs> I muted myself while that was running and then I couldn't figure out how to unmute it because I'm used to being on the on the side that's running the event and, and I don't all my controls are in different places now. So anyway, I'm sorry about that. No problem. All right. You're, you're, you're totally fine. I still hear a bit of echo. I just, I feel like the tech goddesses are like, the sounds will be kind of weird, but. <laughs> We're making it. We're making it so far. Yes. And that, um, the, the, the slight delay that was happening with that clip is only a little different from what the actual clip sounds like. So uh, the actual clip has a lot of echo and is creepy as hell. Beautifully yeah. creepy. I am such a fan of, of Robin Miles. So how did that happen? So we'll, we'll um, transition into like questions from the audience. But before we do that, like, how did that partnership with Robin Miles for the audiobooks happen? Was it just like a chat was like, Nora, this is Robin, like, show your book or like? Yeah, it wasn't even that. Um, I have no control over how my audiobooks get made. Um, Hachette has a division that handles its audio. Um, Hachette is the parent company of Orbit Books, which which produces my stuff. So um, when they told me they were going to make an audiobook, uh, that was probably my fifth audiobook, and I had never had any control of any of them. So I was like, okay, that's great. Um, and uh, they said, we're going to do this one. You know, the, the, the audiobook is going to have uh, an experienced audiobook person. I did request that a Black person, because we started working with uh, the Broken Earth series. Um, so with the fifth season, which was narrated kind of eh, quasi in Hoa's voice and primarily in Essen's voice, um, I wanted a black woman to be the narrator for that. And they said, okay, we found you one. She's pretty experienced. And I'm like, okay, that's great. Send it to me when it's done. Um, and then she called me before they actually made it and went through this whole list of notes and uh, pronunciations and details. And I was kind of shocked because none of the audiobook producers I'd ever worked with before had ever talked to me. Um, and then when the actual thing came out, I was just like, this is, this is good. Like I'm listening to it and I'm like, I love this book. Whoa, wait, I wrote this book. And yeah, so, um, and then since then, I've just asked for her every time. Yeah, I love her. Um, so I'm glad, like, that's such a great partnership. Um, and yes, and so I'm reading in the chat, obviously, you went into so much detail about, like, how that came 
about. So she does. She does really do a good, an amazing job. And then the accents and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so awesome. So let's. The first items question will come from Gabby Boyer. This is so much different from Zoom, and <laughs> I do like Crowdcast, but it's it's not as easy to do uh, group events on in some ways. It's, yeah, it's just different. Okay, so I don't see Gabby. So, Bree, we're going to um, jump straight to you. So, okay. Okay, I see uh, a black barfist, so I think Bree is ready. Bree is accepting and connecting. Watch Bree's audio be absolutely perfect. And I'll be all over. <laughs> and it's oh, there hey, we go. hey Bree, how are you? Hi, I'm great. I'm Hi. Hey. people I'm grilling right about now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, hello, nice to meet you. Like, oh my god, you're absolutely one of my favorite authors of all time. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm, I harass people and make them read the Broken Earth trilogy. So, <laughs> okay. But yeah, um, my question is I know that um, everyone kind of had to crawl their way out of uh, the pandemic and find their way back to themselves. Mm. Um, so, my question to you is what was that writing process like? Um, transitioning to write the second book in the series and is did that experience have anything to do with why it transitioned from being a trilogy to a duology oh 100 percent. that is exactly why um you know i've talked about this in other interviews but basically two things happened um one originally the um the, the 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 trilogy the second book of the trilogy was supposed to be um new york versus america basically um and i had intended to have a kind of racist fascist demagogue president decide that new york was terrible and evil and needed to be punished um, or really needed to be scapegoated in order to give him political power and then trump did that and at that point I was like, okay, so my idea got stolen by the real world, not a fan. Um, and so at that point I had to kind of come up with a completely different plot, um, which I did, which I think ties up all the loose ends that the first book introduces. It wasn't going to go there, but I think I, I have successfully taken it there. Um, but uh, what that meant was that the overall, overall story became shorter and I just didn't feel like there was a need to do a third book anymore. Um, and I probably could have fudged it and, you know, just sort of padded it a lot, but I just don't believe in doing that. So uh, I talked to the folks at Orbit and they were on board and, and that was all I needed to do. That's awesome. Um, I'm just going to shoot my shot while I have you, since we're not getting a third book of this, please, please, please with macaroni and cheese on top. Can we have more far sector? I love it so much. <laughs> You gotta, I'm the wrong person to beg for that one. You gotta talk to DC. <laughs> I wanted to do more. I 100% wanted to do more. I was all on board to do Far Sector for the foreseeable future, provided that it stayed Far Sector. I was not interested in writing uh, a, a typical Green Lantern book in the Green Lantern continuity. And I told them that up front. But once, you know, basically once Young Animal, which was the, the um, imprint of uh, DC that was doing Far Sector, they also did the Umbrella Academy and a couple of, a couple of other books. Uh, it was run by Gerard Way and it was basically supposed to be like adult oriented comic books with sort of typical superhero uh, stuff. Um, but, you know, once we know we're, we're, we're no longer kind of running with Young Animal, at that point, I was not really interested in just kind of writing a standard fight of the week type deal. Um, sorry, I don't mean to throw shade. Um, but, you know, like the fact that I was in a different universe or a different part of the universe in order to write Far Sector was the appeal. And once it went back to Earth, eh, I didn't care anymore. So, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> sure. 
Okay, thank you. And I'm also team art sector, so but <laughs> I understand. Okay. <laughs> Um, okay, so I will transition to the next audience member. Thank you, Bree. Appreciate you so much. And we'll do thank you. Soon. Oh, she's okay. Gone. Thank you. <laughs> oh, just saw that. Sorry. Um, pulling up Gabrielle, who's also Gabby. Oops, next. Oops, press the wrong button. Okay. Gabrielle is accepting and connecting. Accepting and sorry, I'm just cutting kind of you right now. Ah, <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you for thinking my little jig was cute. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, yeah. The podcast is always a little that, slow, so a book club that we meet every meet. So some of the comments are like, "Oh, I'm like oh, I see people from the book club." Oh. Um, Um, and Gabby, let me know in the chat if, um, if you're having any tech difficulties. Yeah, Crowdcast takes a little time on connections, I've noticed. Got a little bit. And I mean, I understand like the security, I guess, is better on Crowdcast, but I guess I spent so much time in the pandemic on Zoom. Just Oh, you've taken me away from my yeah. I mean, it's self. a it's a good system, but it's just slow. So you might want to like preload people um, oh. if you want to. Yeah, like put them all in the green. Well, it's easier when you do it all in the green room. Have everybody there. Turn some people on. Turn some people off. Yada yada yada. Oh, that's brilliant. Okay. <laughs> no, it's just a different system. Yeah, I was thinking. I'm like, yeah, I just need to figure out how to put people in the green room. I just feel like invites is green. You just feel like what? I just when I look at I just see a bite invite on screen. Hmm. But I know when I started. What I'll do is um, as they close to in, like as you're answering their question, then I'll invite the next person. Um. So FYI, um, Tam Tamara, you're after Gabby. <laughs> I have a, a Patreon that I run that I, and I'm not looking for new people for it, but, um, but I do like a, a live stream like once a month or so. So I'm very used to Crowdcast. I mean, and it's good for like one person and multiple talking to an audience type events. It's when you start to do like multiple people that it starts to get like just a little really slow. And I think, yeah, um, I just love different events where like it can be interactive and like mm -hmm. more dynamic. Mm -hmm. um, it, the, the great thing about it is that I have never had a Zoom bomber on Crowdcast. And, that's great. Um, so, and that is why I stick with it. But yeah. yeah. So. And I guess it's your scale because I think I've only had on Zoom, I've only had a, a Zoom bomber once. Mm. Um, so, Gabrielle, I resent it. Uh, Maria, I agree. That is the best mug ever. Um, <laughs> I'm not even from Brooklyn. I'm like, I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even really from Brooklyn myself. So like I always tell people I'm only like 50% New Yorker. I, I live here. I lived here a little bit as a child and then, you know, on and off during the summers after my parents divorced. And then I moved back here in 2007. So, you know, I'm only like 50, 50 New Yorker. The rest of me is like from the deep South. So, but somebody gave me this mug and I just, I love it. She's just like, I love it. It speaks to my soul. I, I think I need to get one of those. It's like, bitch, please, I'm from Harlem. Like, that's right. Because I was, I mean, I'm sure that something like that exists. I'm yeah. sure they exist. So, okay. So, Gabby, while you're sorting that out, I'll invite Tamara um, and then we'll negotiate that. Oh, Gabrielle is saying, I got it, but it won't let me join. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Uh, if they want to do something like maybe drop your comment yeah we can we can also do a thing like where people put questions in the ask a question area down below and if we keep having connection issues i'll just answer the questions perfect yeah i mean if you want to do it that way up to you oh look yeah, at you wearing yeah. that octavia butler mind of my mind shirt Ooh, ooh, i love it 
That's my favorite butler represent. book. That is my huh? favorite butler book. Yay. And this is why we also really love the video component. So because we can see these cool shirts. I would like to keep the video component, but just yeah. <laughs> there's an alternative if it starts yeah. to be an issue. Yeah. Well, hello. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very well. Great. I'm very excited. Um, <laughs> sorry for the dullness. I've been sick for the last week, but um, I can't tell. <laughs> I, have, I have not caught up on the book one yet, but both the covers are gorgeous. So my question is, um, are the covers part of your creative process or do you just let the artist have at it? Yeah, no, I'm not remotely visual. Uh, the sad thing is that, that this is an example of my father's work. My father is a visual artist. Um, you know, he does visual art, sculpture, all kinds of things. And I inherited none of that. Um, I can't draw a straight line. Um, what I can do is write. So, you know, it's <laughs> art. It's just in a different form. But um, yeah, so I, I don't have any suggestions to offer to the art people. Um, but Orbit has a great art director, uh, Lauren mm -hmm. Panapinto. So I'll pass on your compliments to her. I think she designed both of these covers. They're and of course, they do cool. consult with me, um, you know, with their ideas and things like that. Um, but mostly I'm like, oh, I like that, or no, I don't like that. And that's all I really have to offer. So, oh, I just have to say, Broken Trilogy is my favorite. It's oh. the fastest trilogy I've ever read in my life. Don't ask me to recall any of the characters. Oh, no. My brain, my brain doesn't work that way, but I know that I'm in love with it and in love with the uh, curse words that were made up <laughs> in the book. So oh, thank you. But yeah, that those books brought me pleasure. So okay, and it's very nice to meet you. Oh, thank <laughs> you, thank you. I'm glad that uh, you, the, my books brought you so much pleasure. So yeah, and that's it. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Nice to meet you. Then. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, Tamara. Um, I will remove you now. I appreciate the head wrap and the shirt. And the <laughs> head wrap is cute too, right. but I was distracted by the Octavia Butler shirt. <laughs> yeah. <I'll laughs> <get your fire. laughs> okay. We're trying with Gabrielle one more time. Um, Gabrielle, let, let me know in the chat if you've gotten the invite. Um, if that right oh, doesn't well. work, we'll move on to Aaron. And then for other folks, please feel free to drop your questions in the chat. Um, or or in that the questions, which I see a couple and i just not checking. Uh, uh, if you put them in the ask, <laughs> ask a question area, you can actually upvote questions that everybody wants to hear. Um, and then that way, it, it means that I will definitely get to all the ones that are all upvoted, even if we don't have time to get to all of them. Excellent. So while we wait for Gabrielle, let's look at um, one that is seriously upvoted is which of the characters are your most favorite and why? Um, and let's start with um, the Great City series, since mm -hmm. that's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't have favorites. I, people keep asking me that, and I'm like, I write the whole thing. I like all of them. I like them all because oh. I write them. You know, I even like the the bad guys. Um, while I am writing a character, I have to care enough about that character to really want to visualize where they're going and what their thought process is and so on. So um, there isn't a favorite. That's that's not really how my brain works. So. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. So I, I guess it's weird. Like I have favorites. Hmm. Um, and like two of my best of that question was like, which character do you like most? And sort of that one. So well, I'm curious about yeah. what other people's favorites are. <laughs> but yeah, for for the time that I'm writing them, I have to like them all. So <laughs> I don't really have a choice about that. Um, well, I'm curious though, what is your favorite? Um, you know, it's really hard. <laughs> so it varies. It is a hard but question. I, yeah, in general, it's it's always between Bronca and Brooklyn. Oh. Right, like I'm just like I just want I like I want to have tea. I want them over. I want them like kind of agree, kind of disagree. Like I just so, like even though they might start a fight in your front in your living room yeah, if you invite them like, over. <laughs> because of, like there's there's so much synergy, and just enough like there's they're just really like badass. I was like, can I curse? I was like, this is not 
So yeah, I'm just like that. That's I want my posse to be like me, Franca, and Brooklyn. So <laughs> okay, got it. Yeah. Um. So Liam says I like um, Vanessa, oh, who's cool. also really great. Vanessa. Um, so yeah, and their comments around how Team long Brooklyn. <laughs> Yes. Now, now we're all a team together. <laughs> Reese's don't sleep on um, uh, Manny, so that's also a great character. I, also, I mean, so now I understand how great it's like Manny's great. Like, how I was like, I feel like if I saw Manny in person, I would turn my the Aubrey characters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Somebody asked me about a fan cast. I'm like, I don't watch enough TV for that. Uh, yeah. But the, the dude who. Oh God! What was what was that dude in Bridgerton? The first season of Bridgerton. Oh, the the Duke. I don't know his name. I didn't really watch it more than an episode or so. But like yes, the black dude with the about. the little the the low beard and like that. I whoever he is, he looks the part. I don't know if he's got the acting chops, but because like I said, I didn't watch more than an episode. Oh yeah, right, Renee right. Jean Page. Yes, yes. Thank you for that. I was trying to Google it. I was like, I'm not fast enough. Yeah. Okay. So let's, um, I'm very easily distracted. <sighs> Gabby, I don't think tonight is oh, no. your night or mm -hmm. on camera. Um, and I want to say I'll make it up to you, but I feel like I'm, I'm, I'm being a swing on that one, but oh, it'll no. come together. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Um, so we will try again before the end. We'll go back to the ask questions. Um, this was also like something that I had later on in the running show, but it's a very um, uh, voted question. How involved are you going to be in screenwriting the Broken Earth um, adaptation? Uh, I wrote the script, literally. So um, now, uh, probably it's going to be a collaborative script. Um, so because I'd never written a script before I did this, uh, I told them I was willing to try and learn, um, but you know, that I wanted somebody, an experienced script writer to kind of like come along and assist with this. Um, so I did the first draft. We went back and forth for a few months, but I turned it in back in July, yeah, somewhere thereabouts. Um, and, uh, and now it's moved on to a closer, which is, I didn't realize Hollywood had a whole role for this. They, they expect you to have, uh, to turn in a script and then have somebody else like uh, oh. more experienced work on it. Um, so the closer is going to, um, sort of edit it in whatever way that they feel like will make it like hit screen pacing better. Cause like I said, I'm not a visual person. Um, they will also break it down into scenes and timing and kind of start to help a potential director uh, get the idea for like how, how to arrange the shots and how much time it's going to take to do the shots and yada, yada, yada. Um, stuff that I know diddly squat about. So, um, and then the clo the closer will give me back the script and I will approve the script before it goes on to whoever else. Now, after that, it's out of my hands. Mm -hmm. So uh, we don't know who the director will be. We don't know who the actors will be. We don't know if the director is going to want to make changes. If they make changes, I may not be able to stop it. So... You know, I, I am I am starting the process and trying to keep some influence on the process, but I do not control the process. The people who are putting millions of dollars into this control that process. So um, so that's that's what's happening so far. Is your process pretty typical, like for, for the, the writer of the book to write the like the initial cut of the screenplay? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I, yeah, I mean, like, this is, I, I'm a stranger in a strange land here. I don't know. Um, and, and the more that I kind of realize, the more that I learn about Hollywood, the more I kind of understand, oh, maybe this is why so few book writers come into it. Because it's a, it's a committee. It's a collaborative group, very large group process. And several members of that group have incentives that are wildly different from mm -hmm. mine. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, it's it's not necessarily a bad thing. I'm fine with adaptations. In fact, uh, there is a, a an audio book version of um, uh, two of my short stories, The Valed Valedictorian and uh, The Trojan Girl, coming down the pipe. And they are doing some really different things with it. And I'm interested to see how it turns out. 
Um, mm. I, as far as I'm concerned, if you are, uh, if you know what you're doing with your art form and you're producing something in your art form, I don't know that art form. I know squat about film. So I am fine with letting someone else who, who has better skill with that do the job. Um, I just want them to keep the story as intact as possible. Um, there will obviously be changes because we're compressing a 400 page book into maybe an hour and a half. Um, oh. yeah, I just assumed it'd be like three movies. Or oh, no, no, like the first book is 400 pages. Okay. Um, so yeah, it is, right. we are planning for it to be three, uh, three right. movies, right. Okay. but, um, uh, but right now we're just doing the script for the fifth season. Um, okay. and we're going to do the first movie first and second movie after that. Right. So, mm -hmm. so we'll yeah. see. I I'm ecstatic. Um, Angela Dalton asked, did you like writing the screenplay? Um, I did. I, I had never written a screenplay before. Um, so, excuse me, that meant a lot of, you know, sort of newbie <laughs> um, problems. Like I, I tried to, I tried to first download Final Cut Pro, I think is what it's, no, not Final Cut. Final Draft? Oh, good grief. Um, anyway, so I tried to download like the famous screenplay writing software that everybody uses. Um without realizing that it's infamous for having bad tech support. Um, and so, you know, lots of things happen, but basically I was trying to buy this software and it would not let me buy the software. So I ended up having to go with something completely different and I had to learn about formatting issues. Um, you know, the software handles most of the formatting, but I needed to learn a lot of new uh, techniques for like, there's a difference between, you know, dialogue that you are uh, saying in the course of an action scene. And, you know, if you're, if you're doing a solo, it, like, it, it's, it's complicated. It's a lot. Um, yeah. And yeah, so anyway, I finally figured out how to do all of it. Um, I got it done. I was actually really kind of pleased with how it turned out. It wasn't my first experience writing a script because the comic book script was also in script format, very different script format, but script format. Um, so doing that for Far Sector before I did the film script actually was nice practice. Um, I find it quick. I find script writing shockingly quick compared to working on a novel. Like all you got to do is the dialogue, like the actors handle all of the emotional stuff. All I have to do is dialogue and scene setting and things like that. I don't have to describe their inner life. In fact, I had to snatch myself out of the urge to, to editorialize about the character's inner life. Um, you have to keep that really brief in a script. Um, so instead of saying, you know, Essen feels uh, anxious and afraid, um, you just said, you, you say ex Essen parentheses worriedly, that's it. And then the actor takes it from there. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a, a hugely collaborative process that I am, you know, the hilarity is that I don't watch a lot of TV and film. I don't like visual stuff. <laughs> um, so like I keep saying I'm not a visual person and here I keep going into like comic books and film. Um, but so I'm, I'm, I'm adjusting, but I enjoy it. It's fun. Yeah. And it's fascinating for me, like when you said that, I, it finally really clicked in my head when you're like, oh, I'm not a visual person. Because when you said that, I was like, I hear you, but I didn't understand the implications. So <laughs> this is the next question. You could be like, hmm. Isis, I don't like, I don't have a response, but what book to television or book to movie adaptation are you most excited about right now? And I also ask that as somebody who watches a lot of television, so. <laughs> None, because I don't know what's being adapted because I don't watch TV. I don't, I truly don't pay attention to, like I have, there is a, there is a large TV in my house. So sometimes it's on. Most of the time when it's on, I am like reading something. Um, it's just on for noise. It's just like, uh, it doesn't mean anything to me. Um, you know, there are TV shows and films that I've enjoyed, but none of them are, it, it's just not my field. It's not my calling. So. Yeah. No. And that's probably much better. And one day I, I hope to have that relationship to television, but it's not my relationship. Yeah. Right it's, it's not a, I'm, there's nothing wrong with TV. It's just that I am used to, I'm used to books, which are a hugely interactive experience. Like when you're reading a book, 
whatever baggage, whatever imagination you are bringing to that table is meeting those words and blooming into something else. With TV, you just sit there and absorb something that somebody else is shoving at you. There's no room for imagination. There's not much room for you to add to that. So I prefer interactive entertainment, books, video games, stuff like that. Makes perfect sense. So we have a question um, from G and I just wanna, cause I know you, um, just published, I think, a list of recommendations. I think it was on L, but um, right. she loves um, well, books. Um, are you reading and enjoying these days? Not many, um, really none. <laughs> um, I, one of the difficulties that I've had, uh, th this is why I kind of, you know, when Elle was like, we want your book recommendations. I'm like, they're going to be old. Um, but um, Because I don't, I'm not reading anything. Like the pandemic has killed my ability to, like I used to eat books like snacks. I used to like just a book an hour. You know, when I was a child, I I would go to the library. They had a max of 50 books you could check out. And I was like, okay, one, two, 49, 40, you know, and then every week the librarians were like, it's you again? 50 again? <laughs> Are you sure? And yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, what it, what it really kind of boils down to for me is just that I don't, I'm not reading very much at all anymore. Um, the only book, recent book that I have read, and this was in its draft form, was uh, Martha Wells's new forthcoming fantasy novel, because I'm a giant fan of her and her books. Um, uh, the Witch King, I think is what it's called, uh, which just got a cover and isn't even out yet. Um, and I was reading it solely so that I, partly because we're friends and she sent it to me. Um, and, um, and basically whenever I'm like, you know, life is really hard right now, please send me a draft of your book <laughs> to read. Um, and she's very kind and she has done that to me. Um, but yeah, that's the only recent book that I've ever read. So, and awesome. I loved it, by the way. Yay. We will um, ask another question from the ask questions um, section and then we'll go to Aaron's question. We'll have you on camera, so just know that that's coming up. So, um, and Kay, what is fermenting for you right now? That's, we all wanna know. What, like creatively? I just finished a book, I'm tired, <laughs> I'm taking a break. <laughs> um, I, I have just finished a short story. Um, or a, a draft of a short story. Um, I am I am editing it literally as we speak today and tomorrow. I'm sending it off to my writing group. Um, we will try and and get it into publishable shape because right now it's not. Um, and uh, then I'm going to try and sell it. Uh, we will see who buys it. Um, but I'm looking forward to that. And but this is the first short story that I've written in about three years because I have had these books kind of just hanging over me. And that was the only thing I worked on for so long. And I'm one of those people who can't do, scratch that. I discovered with Far Sector that writing film scripts does not interfere with my novel writing, whereas short stories does interfere with my Ooh. novel writing. I don't get it, but... Um, my theory is that because short story, short fiction is kind of a different headspace. You have to, you have to think compact, if that makes sense. Um, and uh, with novels, you aren't supposed to think in a compact way. You need to be as expansive as possible. So I can't do both of those at the same time. I write short stories only in between books. Um, and so that's, that's the only thing that I've worked on lately. Um, and I'm quite pleased with that. So what, when I'm asking this because I'm not a writer, but what is the journey of like, or what do you feel will be the journey of this short story since it's not going into a collection, like how long to black future run? Like, yeah. How does that, yeah. yeah. Well, um, most, what, I'll, I'll tell you what my process is, and I don't know that that's necessarily everybody's process, but um, so once I've got a, a draft that's uh, able for other people to look at, a draft that's not terrible, um, <laughs> then I will send that to my writing group. Um, my writing group uses a, a, a model that's very similar to Clarion and uh, 
Clarion is the writing workshop that uh, Octavia Butler got her start at, for example. Um, and so we sit in a circle and we, we've we all read the story. Each of the people other than me gives their critique of the story, um, offers suggestions, uh, offers changes. I sit there and listen. And then after they've given their part, then I ask questions, offer my own, this is what I intended to do. And, oh, no, I guess I would, that didn't hit. Let's try something different. Um, and then I'll have all of those critiques to take back and use to uh, revise the story again, and this time make it like ready to go. Uh, then I usually start with uh, the best paying markets that I think will pay me, um, whatever those markets might be. Uh, at this stage of my career, I don't really have to search for people to like they come to me and in, in, in many cases, they will try to commission stories for me. I don't usually like to do story commissions. Um, that sort of hangs a deadline and, and like a, feels like a weight hanging over my head. Um, it, it sort of inhibits my creativity. Um, so I usually just say no to all commissions, but I'll tell them like, you know, I don't think I'm, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to promise to do this. I don't want a commission to do this, but what I will do is I'll keep this, this in mind. I am, you know, starting to feel tickles of stor short story urges. If I write something, I will come to you first, mm -hmm. um, and then we will we'll we can talk again. Um, so that's how I usually do it. And there is a an anthology that I cannot discuss because I am under an NDA that has asked about this one. Um, so we will see how that goes. So okay, well, mm -hmm. we are excited about that anthology, um, and I. I'm a respecter of all NDAs, so we won't ask anything more about okay. that. And yay, we have Aaron. Hi. Hey. Oh, we've got somebody. Hi. Hey. And uh, <laughs> hey, everyone, hey, everyone, everyone were better. So um, I, gotcha. I was like, oh my gosh, like I'm so embarrassed we wore the same thing. Um, so um, I also want to thank. I hope you all got it from Disney Sci-Fi. They're, they're, yeah. the they're I, all wonderful <laughs> shirts. Um, <laughs> Isis, I just want to thank you as well for inviting me into this space too. Um, much appreciated. Um, I uh, first discovered uh, How Long Till Black Future Month. Um, I was teaching a sophomore English at the time and oh. used valedictorian um, with my students and they loved it and were so excited oh. that I gave them a story that had profanity in it, um, probably more than anything else. That's what they um, were excited about? That's what they were <laughs> <laughs> on all things. Um, oh but um, I, I specifically on this duology, um, I'm just the way that you combine the human cruelty and racism with the eldritch horror, the cosmic horror is, is so complex and mm. just so deftly crafted. And I just wanted to hear uh, maybe a little bit about how you made those connections and built that relationship and also how you you connect it to the cosmic horror without letting humans off the hook if that makes sense mm -hmm. like you keep mm -hmm. the the human responsibility to each other while mm -hmm. connecting it to this otherworldly evil and so i'd just love to hear a little bit more about that i mean you actually kind of gave the whole prices right there but <laughs> <laughs> all right uh i mean that, that was the idea was that i did not want to let humans off the hook um i did want to when you're when you're trying to say that something magical is affecting human behavior you have a choice as to whether that magical thing is controlling or influencing um, and I wanted influence, not control. So, you know, it was important for me to show that, uh, the, the mechanism that the woman in white uses to homogenize everything is the homogenization that we are already doing. Um, you know, the, the gentrification, uh, you know, I don't even know what to call some of the stuff that, that, that's been happening, um, in New York city and probably other large cities everywhere. Um, but things like you know airbnb uh destroying neighborhoods character and ability to uh, rent to locals um, and things like that 
So, um, you know, there there were plenty of things happening in our real world. There, there's enough evil in our real world that it doesn't ever really work to say that evil is making us evil. Some external thing is making us evil. Um, so it, it just doesn't feel realistic to say that. Um, so that was really it. Um, I, I looked at the same things that H.P. Lovecraft was looking at um, also. Um, <sighs> I don't know how many of you guys have read uh, Lovecraft's fiction or his letters. Um, they're mentioned in the story. Um, but it kind of became really clear, especially when you read Lovecraft's letters to his, his fellow writers and so on, um, that he would do something as mundane as walk down the street in Chinatown. And he was reacting to everybody around him as if they were monsters. I walk down the street in Chinatown and I'm like, huh, maybe I'll get pho for dinner. And, you know, like, or, or, ooh, I want to try those, the, you know, I don't know, whatever, uh, longans or whatever. I think I'm mangling the pronunciation. Um, I discovered lychees the other day. Um, I've had lychees many, many times, but I've only ever had them canned. I've never seen them in like the whole form. So, you know, I'm meandering through Chinatown and I'm like, the fuck is that? Sorry, pardon my language. Um, anyway. And, and the, the seller was like, come on, try it. It's only $9. Um, <laughs> inflation. Um, but so I bought them. And then I, he showed me how to peel them open. And I'm like, oh, my God. It's raw. So, you know, for me, that experience is discovery, is wonder, is joy, is connection with other human beings, many of whom don't speak my language, don't come from the same place as me, eating new things, experiencing new wonders. For me, it's a wonderful and a powerful experience. Lovecraft did the same thing and was frightened, horrified, driven back to New England by it, ultimately. Um, and, and so basically, I just wanted to say that he is sensing the same thing that I am. He sensed that energy of the city and perceived it as a threat. I sense that energy is of the city and I perceive it as a source of power. So, yeah, anyway, I'm babbling. Oh, Thank hello, you. pretty. Oh yeah, this is this is Nix. Hello, Nix. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she's gorgeous. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Large. Um, oh yeah. my god. Uh, yeah, she's she's big. Oh, um, I have a big yeah. kitty too, but he's uh, he's asleep in the front room. So my magpie is twenty pounds. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Aaron, thank you. That was thank fascinating you. as always. Okay. Appreciate so it. Much for your question. Um. Yeah. Okay. That. Is dropped. Uh, okay, so um, I was gonna have somebody else on screen, but I think they're like, I don't want to be on camera. Oh, so no. going back to, <laughs> we're just fine. Um, so going back to um, another question that's been upvoted is, what um, if you could be involved in your dream adaptation graphic novel series adaptation? What would it be? Hmm. None really. Um. I yeah I, I I like adaptations when other people do them, like I don't you know being involved is is the part that like I'm willing to do that for my own novels because it's important to me to see my work not get mangled, um, but I don't think I want to get involved in anybody else's adaptations. Um, I don't have the like it's hard for me to make that connection to the visual realm. Um, when I am trying to imagine like shots in a script, I have to, I have to put people in a room. I have to make them like, I have to consider angles and which direction they're talking from. And like, it's not that detailed, but like, I, I do have to consider like, she stood up, she sat down. Is he going to talk down at her? Is he standing over her? Is he looming over her? Like all of this is stuff that I don't have to think about when I'm writing. So um, when I'm writing a, a novel um, and, and it's hard. So I think I would only be willing to be involved in adaptations of my own work. Mm -hmm. that makes sense mm -hmm. um we are going to i know you told us you don't watch television and you're not reading a lot and i hear you right mm -hmm. um i'm asking this for the fangirl in me and it is a question that is in the chat are you planning to watch the upcoming kindred adaptation on who oh hell yes <laughs> yes yeah that is not a question I will make time for TV that I think is worth my time. So, you know, there's not much, but yeah, I, I was already, I'm in for that one. 
Are you? Oh, the ticking sound is back. I don't know what that oh, it is. Let me um, mute. Oh. Dang. It's definitely. Okay, let me ask this question quickly. Are you excited or nervous about the adaptation? Uh, am I excited or nervous about what? You yeah, cut I'm it. Three two, the adaptation. Um, waiting to judge. Yeah, I don't. I don't have any feelings about it until I've seen it. It's gone now. Oh, you muted. Huh? Mm. Yes, it was. I'm like, oh, oh wow. Play around with my mic. Oh. Yeah, we'll just ignore it. Yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely me. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll just move on. We got a few minutes left, so I don't want to yeah, miss no. too many questions. Okay. Yeah. So, and I'm also like, if you've like, she, she's giving her own questions. I'm trying to prioritize questions that are related to the Great City series. Um, so, would you write an anthology to give us a deeper look of what happened to the failed cities? Huh. I mean, I suppose if the urge ever came, I would, I could do something like that. Yeah. Um, but the failed cities aren't living cities anymore. So it would be an anthology of tragedy, which would not be good. Um, yeah. So I, I think I would, I'm not sure I would ever really want to write about a bunch of people suffering and dying. Um, I mean, I do that, granted, but uh, like not intentionally. Um, so I don't set out to make everybody die. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I don't know if I'd do that one. I, I, I have left the door open to write a third book because I originally intended this to be a trilogy because I still have, you know, some ideas from what used to be the the, the three book idea that I originally pitched to Orbit, um, and and obviously there's a there's a really big obvious uh, dangling plot thread that I could pick up, and and if I ever decided to write a third book, I left that in there on purpose. Um, however, we'll see. We'll see if the urge takes me. <laughs> Oh, you're still muted. Yeah, I forgot. That's okay. I did that too. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, thank you for that response. Um, Ariana has a question that is also related to, like, um, the Great Cities series and Lovecraft derivatives. So, hmm. Ariana, you're going to get an invite to be on screen. Um, you can either define it or let me know in the chat um, if that's awesome. not flowing for you. Um, okay, so um, while Rob has the time, please just copy your question. <laughs> no, but I'm not great. Oh, um, crowd cast. Um, so, <laughs> um, Ariana says, as a person who has read no Lovecraft and only watched love the Lovecraft derivative works that have um, explicitly problematized is racism like yours in Lovecraft Country. I'm wondering what about the works of his drew you from or would you recommend to somebody who would like to understand the, um, the cities, um, the Great City series more deeply? You shouldn't need to read any Lovecraft to understand the Great City series. Um, the, the relevant pieces I mention in the book, um, things like his, his characterization of Chinese people as dangerous mental machines, um, you know, things like, uh, one of the, the, mm, that's a spoiler. Okay. I can't mention that part. Um, but you know, things like, uh, uh, a particular city's name, um, are, are, are all built into the story so that you don't have to read Lovecraft. I don't send anybody to Lovecraft unless they are, they are choosing to go there. Um, because once you have seen, that a lot of the dread and and the things that frightened him that are visible in his work, once you've realized how much of that derives from his fear and dread and loathing of people of color, um, you can't unsee it. So it's better to either come to Lovecraft ignorant and and engage with it without knowing anything about the man or if you're going to go into Lovecraft knowing up front that he is just this gigantic, terrified 
monster of a person in many ways, um, then I, I can't in good conscience tell you to go read Lovecraft, can I? Um, so um, that said, uh, if you want just a simple sample of what I'm talking about, try the short story, uh, The Horror at Red Hook. Um, it is set in New York as well. It is about a part of Brooklyn called Red Hook, where Ikea is now. Um, but, uh, you know, in the back in the day, it was the place where there were a lot of immigrants and so on. And look at how Lovecraft describes those immigrants. Look at how Lovecraft um, kind of frames the usual natural diversity of, a, of an immigrant neighborhood. Um, and and that will give you a good sense of what exactly he is uh, he is he's doing in his work. Thank you for that. And I just want to bring in Angela's comment. Who says thank you so oh, much. For side note, horror at Red Hook you can probably find online free. Um, a lot of his short stories are uh, public domain. So awesome um, for exposing a lot without amplifying his work. You're such a blessing. Oh. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, this will be. I mean, I will say Lovecraft's dead. So if you decide to read him, you're not going to be like, there's no amplifying his work at this stage. He is he is permeated so thoroughly throughout our zeitgeist, through the fantasy and science fiction world, through TV and film. There's no putting that genie back in the bottle. Um, so you can buy Lovecraft if you want without feeling like you were giving money to to a, a, a terrible person. Um, but there are libraries and a lot of stuff is out there free. So anyway. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm going to ask, Bree has a question. Um, you mentioned that um, you're not a very visual person, but the beginning of the city was very visual. What do you mean? <laughs> Um, who will be the first like avatar of New York. Um, so where did that visual experience come from? Or do you not it, count it as visual? It, it, I have tried to explain to other people how my weird, bizarre ass brain works and it, I, I have not been able to. But when I am writing, I am trying to capture a feeling. So I will use whatever tools I need to create that feeling. The feeling is what I'm searching for, not the image. So, you know, like in, in, in that very first chapter of the city we became, um, you know, the character is, is standing on a rooftop yelling at, at New York, basically. Um, and, and he's singing to the city and the city is singing back to him. Um, and, you know, he, he talks about, you know, that he's feeling like he's he's listening to the Ode to Joy with the Busta Rhymes backbeat. I'm I'm bringing in sound, I'm bringing in smells, I'm bringing in visuals, but all of it is intended to build towards this feeling. I'm not interested in the visuals alone. So visuals alone don't have meaning. They don't have feeling. Um, you have to put all of that together. It's it's jazz. I don't know how many of y'all grew up listening to jazz, but whenever you go to, or, or have been to a jazz performance, but when you go to a jazz performance, um, usually the pattern is that each member of the, the trio quartet band will, will do their solo. And then at the end of it, and you know, at, after their solo, the audience claps. And then when the solo is done, then they come back together and do their bit. So sound to me is a solo. I'm sorry, sound visuals to me are a solo. Um, I don't do just visuals. I want the whole sound, if that makes sense. So I, I don't know if that makes any sense or if that just sounds, makes me sound really high. I don't know. Um, but uh, anyway. I, I, I'm in the Bay Area, so like sounding really high is very solo. It's been making a lot of sense to me. Okay. Um, but, and it made a lot of sense to me. Okay. Um, so I just want to address, so People have asked, do you have email lists? I'm directing them to, even though you're not looking for any Patreon members, I'm directing them to your Patreon page. It's um, just NK Jemison and Patreon. But um, with Patreon, you have to pay a dollar. You cannot like just be a member of a Patreon without paying. Um, you have to pay at least $1. So um, 
that's why I'm not looking for new members because I don't need, I, I started the Patreon when I was trying to quit my day job and become a full-time writer. And then I became a bestseller. So, um, you know, it was like, you know, thank you for the support, but oops, I don't really need this. Um, and I actually tried to quit the Patreon two or three times and my patrons have been like, no, we like it here. We're not letting you go. No. So, so I have not shut down the Patreon because of them. Right. <laughs> so let, like, let people give them your dollar. Their dollar fine. Well. You know, yeah. All, yeah. all I do on there is I talk once a month. Uh, I, you know, I check in once a month. I sometimes post cat pictures. Um, I will occasionally post exclusive fiction um, or exclusive, you know, like I put up uh, one of the scripts from far sector, things like that. Um, so that they have some exclusive content. But I mean, it's, you know, I don't know that anybody that's just interested in my books would be particularly excited by it, but up to you. Okay. Well, to me, all of that seems like far more than worth a dollar, but who, who do I know? Um, okay. So uh, it's six o'clock. Um, I'm okay with going a little over if you want. So this will be the last formal question. And then this or that, um, oh, I missed these questions. Okay, so we'll close with this one. I had another question, but this question is better. Um, how have the people, it's that, no. uh, I think I've risen up. I've risen up. I'm like, okay, I don't want to answer this one. How it's people okay. Have it's or it's actually any okay. more risen up to respond to the picture in the book. I mean, I don't know that, that Staten Island is out there like, you know, Hamilton, rise up. We're going to find N.K. Jemison and get rid of, you know, like, I don't, I don't think it's like that. But um, uh, I will say also that uh, I had uh, sensitivity slash expert readers for every section of the story that I was worried about. And I did have a sensitivity reader for Staten Island. <laughs> um, so who was literally a Staten Islander who grew up there, who, who left. And I was like, I need to know that I am not, that I'm being fair because I am a typical New Yorker who doesn't visit Staten Island very much, who doesn't have a positive opinion of it um, because most New Yorkers from the other boroughs don't. Um, you know, and, and I, I needed to be fair. So, um, you know, I wanted also to get the details right. And like, she gave me this, actually, it was Lauren Panapinto, uh, who is the art director of Orbit. Oh. Um, she gave me a map of Staten Island with like interesting areas to check out on it. So I went on like these personal tours of Staten Island where I'm just driving around the island. I'm visiting places that you see in the book. Um, I stopped and had pizza at Danino's. It was terrible. And I put that in the book in a different way. Um, you know, I'm sorry, Danino's people. I, I'm not a Staten Islander. It was very Staten Island pizza it was extremely staten island pizza the clam pie that i talk about in the story is a real thing i do not like it but that's fine that's not danino's that's that's the fact that i am not properly staten island and i don't have staten island tastes anyway um so yeah it's it's um uh, it was important to me to make sure that I was being fair and that I was doing a good job. Um, and most of the Staten Islanders that I've run into who read it were like, mm, yeah, she's not wrong. So, I mean, it's been a reluctant agreement, but it's been an agreement. So, yeah, I, I, I was born in Harlem and I feel the same way about that. Oh, really? So, so. <laughs> okay. I was reading it, I was like, this tracks for me, but oh, okay. I'm not All right. Staten Island. So yeah, I tried to say, if, like, the only really negative things that I said were about Long Island, so <laughs> they don't count. I don't care. Nobody cares about Long Island. Anyway, so. Yay. Your work is such a blessing, so thank you so much. Um, the fact that you said yes to um, this private virtual um, event with the Sister Sci-Fi siblings means so much to me. I think it means a lot to the Sister Sci-Fi siblings, so I appreciate it you and your time and your craft so deeply thank um, you yeah and yeah. i wish i could have done it in person i'm just like i'm still being leery because of covid um i just it, i could not in good conscience have events happening in places where later there's an outbreak and i find out that somebody got sick or died because of me so um, I'm still trying to stick to virtual events. Um, and thank you for all of you for joining us for this. So. 
Yeah, get that. We get it. <laughs> <laughs> COVID, COVID is real. It is out there. So. Mm, ain't that the yeah. truth? Yeah. yeah. So. And it's nice to be able to like. Some of us are in our bedroom in our pajamas. And <laughs> <laughs> you with you. Gotcha. I'm not saying me. Oh, oh well, okay. Uh huh. <laughs> So yeah, so we appreciate you. We appreciate your magic. Um, in one minute, we can do this um, on another event. I got feedback like it's nice to close out. And it's a sci-fi call and response. It's it's one. I say something. I mean, it's me and you. So if hmm. if you're game for that, you can do that. If, it you know, depends on like, what you say. So the call and response goes um, claim claim the magic, and the response is create a feature. We do that three times. And we all say ashe. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. All right. Okay. Um, Let's claim the magic. And what was the response? Create our future. Create our future. Beautiful. I love it. Okay. Yeah. We can do this. Okay. It's me and you. <laughs> <laughs> we will. We'll do it as best we can. Okay. Yeah, it'll be fabulous. Um, claim our magic. Create our future. Yay. And we'll just do it once. And we all say ashe. Thank you so I love much. it. This is beautiful. And this we'll be beautiful. in person whenever it's safe. We will safe. definitely do this in person at some point. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. Bye. Oh, wait. I can't control it. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm do it. <laughs> I can't shut it down. I'm so used to being a 